What am I gonna say? <clears throat> well, last night went way better than I thought it was going to. I was warm all night, except for when I had to get up and pee. I don't know if you could hear that, but all night long, they were like, I'm assuming elk, running around screaming at each other. And once I realized that they were probably elk, I didn't care anymore, but like initially it sounded like some kind of an alien. You know, at the very least it was an animal I'd never heard of. But one of them has been crying since four in the morning and it hasn't moved. It's stayed in that direction, so I think I think I'm gonna go try to find it. <clears throat> I'm gonna drink this cocoa powder. And I might make a cup of tea too, I don't know. I'm not in a hurry today because it's, I believe, 25 degrees out here. <laughs> I haven't checked my phone, but I'm not exactly in a hurry to leave in temperatures like this. I'm excited to see if I can go find this animal though. Drinking some mediocre hot cocoa while simultaneously trying to pack up my stuff. I'm gonna close up my tent here and we're actually gonna go out and see if I can get a glimpse of this animal. It's over that hill, for sure. I'm debating whether I wanna go over the hill or around it. Well, I updated the, the temperature on my phone and it is in fact 25 degrees out here, but it doesn't feel like it. I tell you man, if you're well fed and you're hydrated, and you have the proper insulating clothing on, you won't even know it's cold outside. It's coming from that direction, or at least I think it was. I'm gonna try to wait here and see if I can hear it again. Because part of the noise kinda sounds like a cow, but the beginning of the noise sounds like what I heard last night. Whatever it was, it stopped making noise. I heard some noises further that way, but if it's moving, I don't need to go get it. Whatever was making that shrieking noise was in the same location over here since about four o'clock in the morning. So I was wondering if it was like an injured animal, but if it's moving when it heard me, I don't think, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, it definitely moved, it just cried again. It's off in that direction somewhere. Well. Head back down to camp and uh, pack up my shit. time to try to fix my windscreen bolt. I'm just going to tighten it up as hard as I can to see, uh, see what happens. See that? This is the, the, the screw that comes out. Now I put a, a generous amount of blue Loctite on that. Even if I put a spring washer in there it wouldn't really do the trick because the spring washer would be pushing it in the direction I don't want it to go. It might even help it come out. It'll have to do. Well, let's see if she starts. Look at that. First fucking try. So last time I was out and I had a hard time starting it, I think it was because the oil was thick, not because the battery was low. Because when I plugged my battery in, it was full. It was full charge. But on my way out here, it got me thinking. I think I'm going to get like a volt, a voltmeter gauge and attach it to this shroud somehow just so I know if the battery is wearing out because you kind of need that information if you're going to be coming to places like this 
where uh, it would be bad if your bike didn't start. That would at least give you a, a little warning if you're going to start having battery trouble. I would also like to get a tack. I also need to start bringing an air pump so I can drop the air in my tires. Normally when I leave I air them up to about 30 pounds just in case I start to develop a slow leak or something. I don't have to worry about it as much. Anyway, I've been thinking about how uh, making videos on YouTube is kind of like whittling a block of wood because every time you make a video you make just about as much progress as you would if you just chipped off a piece of wood on a block. There still isn't a visual representation of what you're trying to carve, but you are making progress. That's kind of how I felt with this, and whenever I think about YouTube and how people can even possibly become successful here, it just takes a while. But when you find something that works, like these camping videos, it's, YouTube kind of gives, gives you a hand. This will kind of promote it, you know, like when you get views and stuff, YouTube promotes the videos more in search results and then that helps you grow because then more people see it and they subscribe and so on. So like, <clears throat> basically it's like when you find something that works, you just have to bust your ass and try to make only that stuff that works, I think. At the end of the day, you still just kind of have to do it as a hobby. I've been trying to convince my buddy to start doing it because uh, he made a YouTube channel but he never uploaded anything to it. Last time I was at his house, he had built this. He turned his garage into this sweet-ass man cave. And we sat in there and we talked for like three hours. And it was awesome. I loved hanging out in there. But I kept coming back to the idea that his garage looked kind of like a set. Like it would be the perfect set for like a like a YouTube podcast. Uh, and we're like, uh, like he's into like guns and hunting and then all that kind of outdoorsy shit. If he just was able to get some people over there, set a couple of cameras up, put mics on the people and just talk he might be able to come up with uh, pretty cool content. Because when you're having a conversation you want to have and it flows, it flows nicely. It's just kind of, that's literally how successful podcasts work. I've been thinking more about like, like what vlogging actually is, you know what I mean? Like when I come out here, I don't just come out and then decide what I'm gonna talk about. I actually do have ideas kind of pre-planned. Like really vague ideas, like about what to talk about, but Generally, I just try to think of something that interests me that I might bring up to a friend for conversation, right? And then, then I just go and I just talk to myself about it, kind of like I would if I was talking to a friend just without the responses, you know what I mean? So like if he could just set up a couple of cameras, get a buddy over there, have a couple of topic ideas written down and just go for an hour, I think it would work beautifully. If I lived in the same area, which I don't, I would go over there and force him to do it and I would just put it on my channel and incubate it with my viewers and see uh, see if anybody likes it. But I'm gonna link his channel in the description. He doesn't have any videos yet, but I'd like you to subscribe to his channel to encourage him. I think that would be kind of funny. Comes back to his channel, he's got like 50 subscribers. That would be cool. <laughs> I don't know, I think he just doesn't have the time. But that's another thing. If you're gonna hang out in your garage and talk to your buddies, you're gonna do it anyway. So it's not really going out of your way. You're just kind of, you're now just recording you and your buddies. I don't know, if he does it right, the way that I'm visualizing it happening, I think it would be really cool. Because podcasting is, is kind of like, it seems like it can work, but the way that iTunes is run, it doesn't seem like it's easy to get your material out there. Whereas on YouTube, it is a lot easier to get your material out there because the more people view it, the more people see it. And that's, it's just that simple. You don't have to write a review about it. Whereas on iTunes, you have to write a review about it. And I think that's why a lot of podcasts don't work. Like, you can get all the views in the world, but if people aren't writing reviews about it, iTunes doesn't care. I don't know. Just some, just some thoughts. This road is cool. Exploring this little side road here. Don't know where it goes. I didn't know this was over here. I would have probably come over here and camped actually. That's the thing. Sometimes when I find a spot I just want to take it and, and quit messing around. You know, but when I came out here I had visualized in my head what it was gonna look like and where I was gonna camp and this was more ideal. This was what I was imagining. But then I wouldn't have had that sweet experience with those elk. 
that's one of the things I love about camping is when you get to hear animals like that. In case I didn't make it clear last night, I was laying there and I heard some coyotes off in the distance and I heard this animal shrieking and then I heard it shriek again but it was probably 50 yards in the other direction. I thought, wow, that thing's moving fast. And uh, I thought it was a bird but I kept hearing it and I realized later on it must have been an elk because I started hearing antlers clinking together and then uh, that kind of went on all night. <laughs> and then around four in the morning there was just one that was crying out and that was the one I kind of went to look for today. But uh, I think that's like really cool. It's just, it's like you get more for your money. You know what I mean? Like when you're camping, you're coming out to be in nature. And so when you actually get to experience it and hear animals doing what animals do, it's like, it's the best. You know, it's just my favorite. What is this? I don't know what I have just discovered. That might be an old water trough. I know there's cattle in this area because I kept finding cow pies over by my campsite. That looks like a shelter that someone made. Huh. I'm gonna look up and see if I can hunt here because I keep seeing squirrels. This would be a perfect spot to come because back, back here I can get way far away many people well I think that's it for me today I don't really have anything else I'm planning on doing and uh, I haven't run into any crazy people yet last time I was up here I ran into a guy who I'm pretty sure was schizophrenic that was pretty cool <laughs> it's in uh, one of the camping videos so I don't know maybe you've seen it if you haven't you should go find it um, but yeah I'm just gonna probably head back to town and drink a coffee and then Try to get back down to Phoenix before, uh, I guess, 1 o'clock. I don't know. We'll see. My original goal is to get back there by 12 so that my wifey doesn't get upset. Anyway, uh, yeah, so if you, uh, if you came back to watch this video after watching last week's video, thank you. Remember, next week I'm going to have another camping video, hopefully. So come back and watch that. Remember, go to, go to the Blue Collar Joe's YouTube channel and fucking subscribe to it. Let's see if we can convince him to start making videos. You don't have